and hello YouTube, this is GS Mouse Smart, and I'm today on a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at which browser is best for you. Right now, there are four popular browsers on the market that many people are using, and this includes Microsoft Edge, which is part of the new Windows 10 expansion. We have Google Chrome, which has been around for a long time, Mozilla Firefox, and Oprah. Now, each of these browsers has their own pros and cons in their own little categories. I've basically split this video up into five categories, and I want to take a look at each of these browsers and hopefully help you decide on which browser you should use and which browser you should use for certain cases, uh, depending on what's more important to you on these five categories down about to the list. So we have four browsers and five categories, and these include speed and performance. They include privacy and security, the user interface, add-ons and extensions, and extra features that are also worth mentioning that make the browser somewhat unique. So depending on each of these five categories, you can make a decision on which category is more important to you, and then see which browser tends to do better than the other browsers, or see which browser has better features that suit you compared to others. So let's go ahead and start with the most popular uh, category, which is speed and performance. Uh, this is really important to a lot of people sometimes, and especially people who don't really care too much about security or privacy or add-ons and features like that. They tend to always look at speed, and a majority of the internet users care about speed the most. Now on the screen, you'll see some results of tests that were done. I got this information from another source, another website basically did four benchmark tests on each of the browsers uh, through Jetstream, Kraken, Robo Hornet, and HTML5, and you'll be able to see the scores for each of these categories. Now what these benchmarks are is basically just the way a website is built. Some websites are built with HTML5, some websites are built with Jetstream. Uh, each of these runs different code, and depending on the browser will depend on how fast they can actually get to a certain website, depending on uh, which benchmark uh, that site is using. So as for Jetstream, it's basically a JavaScript benchmark, and it's mostly used in very advanced web applications. And as you can see, Microsoft Edge takes the lead by a far long shot, and uh, Chrome comes in second, Opera comes third, Firefox fourth, and it shouldn't be a surprise because Microsoft Edge is a much newer uh, browser, and Chrome tends to always be a bit faster. Um, just historically speaking, if you've used any of these browsers, you probably have noticed a difference uh, when you're loading very big websites that are very advanced that Microsoft Edge tends to do a better job overall. Now for the Kraken benchmark test, this is another JavaScript performance benchmark. However, the lower numbers tend to do better this time because these are in milliseconds. And as you can see here, Chrome actually is a lot better, Firefox, Opera, and then Edge rounds up last. If we take a look at Robo Hornet, which is another benchmark that takes into account performance of layout, the local storage, and is quite different from the other benchmarks. Uh, once again, the higher the score here, the better. And as you can see from these results, Chrome actually gets it done a lot better with 82, then Opera comes next. Firefox following, and Microsoft Edge. Now this is a pretty important benchmark because it does take into account how fast it can load certain videos or certain types of images or you know different types of layout design or different types of graphics or different types of objects on the page. So you can see that Chrome does a really good job at loading uh, a, a varied amount of content. Now HTML5 is another test and it's not really a performance benchmark, but I'm calling it a performance benchmark. It's more like how well a browser supports HTML5. And several websites do use HTML5, so it's important that we take a look at this as well. And here you can see that Chrome and Opera tend to do very well, Firefox coming in third, and Microsoft Edge actually coming in last. Now, interestingly enough, Microsoft never really likes to adhere to HTML5 or any of the web standards, but both Microsoft Edge have actually improved quite a bit. So who wins for the speed and performance? It'd probably be Chrome because it can do everything in a pretty fast manner. The fact that it can load HTML very quickly and Robo Hornet, which is a really powerful uh, test as well because JavaScript really isn't everything. Uh, Chrome tends to be the fastest browser, but Chrome also has its shortcomings. 
Speaking of shortcomings, let's take a look at security and privacy because that is where Chrome tends to have one of its shortcomings. Now, this is a category that's becoming a lot more important over the years, especially now, you know, we're in this modern age where hacking is a real thing happening on a daily basis a lot of us are scared that you know people like google or microsoft are trying to track us there's a lot of debate about that going on so security and privacy is becoming a lot more important today and if we take a look at edge it it has some fairly good things to say about security and privacy since it is a windows app it won't bring any trouble or won't bring any problems to you unless you actually allow it to do so which is great because if you know how to use a browser at least nothing will really happen to it because it's a windows app it also has a smart screen system which basically blocks all phishing sites which is also great microsoft passports can also be used instead of passwords which is also fairly new and you can secure your things a lot better but unfortunately in private mode still stores your private data even if you're not expecting it to, or even if you're thinking it's not storing it, it is still storing it. So there are some good features. You are fairly safe using Edge, but perhaps your privacy isn't as high as you probably would like it to be. Now, as for Chrome, it's always been a browser that tends to have much privacy concern because it's owned by Google, obviously. And Google tends to have a pretty bad past with privacy. Uh, however, as far as security goes, it's fairly good. The browser does warn you whenever you happen to meet malware or tend to go onto a phishing website. It does warn you on that. Each tab also runs in a sandbox mode. So there's no harm done to your browser unless, once again, you allow it to do so. It also updates the browser in the background, which is really neat. And the HTTPS, which is a much more secure type of browsing experience, is supported. So everywhere that HTTPS can be supported, it is being used. As far as Firefox goes, it's probably one of the best browsers for privacy, which is why a lot of people like to use it, but it is lacking some security. Uh, first of all, the browser is open source, so anyone can view the code. There is also tracking prevention in the browser. Unfortunately, it does not have any sandboxing mechanic. Your browser can get some harm done to it compared to other browsers where no harm can be done unless you allow it to do so. However, there is being development made to support a sandbox mechanic. Uh, the browser does warn you if a site has malware or phishing, just like the other browsers do, which is fairly good. Updates also happen in the background and they also support HTTPS wherever it can be supported. Now, lastly, Opera tends to not be very secure. And when I, when I talk about browsers not being very secure, it doesn't mean that they're not insecure. All these browsers are fairly secure. They are secure. It's just that some browsers tend to lack some security features that certain browsers do have, and Opera tends to be one of them. Now, they do use badges to warn for malware and phishing, and each tab does run in a sandbox mode. So once again, no harm can be done unless you allow it to do so. And it does update in the background, and it does support HTTPS everywhere that it can support, but compared to some of the other browsers, it is lacking some of these security features, and that's why some people tend to not like Opera as much compared to Firefox, which is, has a lot of uh, good privacy, or compared to Chrome or Edge, which has fairly good security. Next, we're going to take a look at user interface, and many of these browsers tend to have a very similar user interface, uh, so it isn't really that big of a category you should pay too much atten attention to. There are some small tweaks that may pull you in your that may pull you in or push you away. Uh, for one, Edge does have a very minimal interface and it's very clean. There's no menu bar, there's no status bar, tabs are in the title bar, there's more screen space, uh, sidebars are used for looking at your features and settings, and that's all great, but the only downside is there's not much customization for Edge, which is why it is lacking a bit in the user interface section. But in general, it's very clean, it's very nice to look at, and there's a lot of screen space. As for Chrome, it's also fairly clean. It's always been known to be fairly clean, but it's not as clean as Edge. You do have an options menu, you do have your extensions, you have your user button when you log into Google. So there are quite a few buttons on your browser 
and there also isn't much customization either. You can get themes for Chrome, but they're literally just wallpapers and they don't really change your browser that much. As for Firefox, once again, also a fairly clean browser, but there's lots of customization here. You can use themes for wallpapers and you can get complete themes which completely change your browser, whether it's be the wallpaper changed on your browser, whether it be the colors, whether it be you know some of the tabs, you can really customize the Firefox browser, which makes it really neat. Now, Opera is very similar to Edge. It's very compact. It's very nice to look at. And since the browser is based off of Chrome, you sort of get the best of both worlds between Edge and Chrome. It only has a single menu button, but once again, themes are really lackluster as they only support the speed dial page where you see all of all of your most favorited or most visited or most recent visited uh, sites. So there's not much customization in Opera at all, perhaps even less customization than Chrome has to offer and Edge has to offer. As for add-ons and extensions, uh, nowadays extensions are really getting popular. They bring a lot of new features. You can install pretty much any extension to allow you to accomplish anything really. And Edge takes a big hit here because right now there's no support for extensions and it won't it won't be to the fall of 2016s where Microsoft may actually try to support extensions. So if it's, if it's anything that's keeping people away from Edge, it's the fact that there are no extensions. Edge is by far not a bad browser, it's a fairly good browser, but the fact that there are no extensions, it is pushing people away. Now, Chrome tends to be the clear winner here in extensions because it has a massive Chrome store where you can easily install any extension you want with just a few clicks. These have Chrome has some of the best extensions across all the browsers, and there are a lot of other browsers that you can install similar extensions, but the reality of the matter is that there are also a lot of extensions that are not supported by other browsers. So you may be seeing yourself come back to Chrome for those few extensions that you can't use on any other browsers that you really like. And this is what sets back a lot of the other browsers heavily because of Chrome's ability to have this massive extension store and being able to manage your extensions very easily and install many very easily as well. Now, Firefox does have add-ons. There are not as many extensions or add-ons as Chrome has. However, soon Firefox will be able to use Chrome extensions. So once that's been out and it's been developed, Firefox may stand a chance against Chrome. As far as Opera goes, they do have a download Chrome extension extension. So it's basically an extension that's called download Chrome extension, which is really neat because you can use Opera and then you can still use all of your Chrome extensions there, which I think is really awesome. And lastly, I want to go over some of the extra features that make each browser a little unique and that may push you or pull you in one direction or the other when taking a look at these browsers. Now, Edge has a nice reading list where you can keep pages on a list and watch them and read them later. They also have a reading mode where no ads are shown and the sidebars are taken out for easier reading. They have annotations where you can annotate web pages and highlight things. And Cortana is very nicely integrated to search without having to leave the current page. Uh, as for Chrome, you do have a supervised user mode where you can set restrictions for certain users to blocking sites or logging all the visited sites and a bunch of other things. There is also a built-in task manager where you can look at your RAM and CPU uses, which is really great if you see that your browser is lagging or having some trouble. There's also desktop shortcuts that open links, so if you want to save a link and you don't want to go into your browser and look into your bookmarks, you can easily make a desktop shortcut to that website using Chrome and it will automatically open. It also automatically offers to translate any web page that is in a foreign language. And lastly, it synchronizes all of your bookmarks, histories, and settings from any account across all computers if you like to synchronize that, which is really neat. However, some of the other browsers do it very well 
too. Now, Firefox is really good at working with tabs. They have tab groups. You're able to organize your tabs into groups so you can avoid having too many tabs. They also have a reading mode, which is similar to Edge, but it removes the images as well, which is why it's kind of lackluster compared to Edge's reading mode. There's also pocket integration where you can save articles and videos for later, which works very well with the mobile app. So if you save your videos or articles on the computer, if you go on your mobile and you have the app, you can actually look at those same articles and videos that you've saved for in the po for pocket integration. Now, Firefox Hello is also something that's really cool where you can start a video conversation very easily with anyone else just by sharing a link and you can use your cam, you can screen share, and it makes it really easy to talk to someone if you don't want to use something like Skype. And lastly, it also synchronizes all bookmarks, histories, and settings from accounts across computers. Lastly, we have Opera, and one of their best features is Speed Dial, where whenever you open a new tab, some of the most frequently visited pages that you've went to are actually on that speed dial tab. It's sort of like a mini bookmark collection that it's right on the tab page. This is really cool and I really like that feature. I used to use Opera a lot and that was one of the best features that they had. They also have a built-in task managers. Unfortunately, you do have to enable the developer mode to see the CPU and RAM usage because it's not on the default browser. They also have a turbo mode, which basically compresses the page to get rid of any extra content. And that basically saves you bandwidth. They have mouse gestures where you can actually integrate certain mouse actions to link together with other browser actions, such as if you want to create a new tab, you can perhaps move your mouse down and click or other certain movements with your mouse or other certain gestures that you can link to other browser actions, which is really cool as well. And lastly, you can also synchronize your bookmarks, histories and settings from accounts across all your computers. So those are sort of the features that you have on each of the browsers. That's sort of the rundown on what each browser is good at and what each browser is not good at. If you're looking for something very private, you may want to pick something like Firefox. If you're looking for something that has a lot of cool new features that you can take advantage of, you might want to pick something like Edge or Firefox. If you're looking for something that's very fast and has a lot of add-ons and extensions and has a nice uh, user interface, you may want to go with something like Chrome or Opera. And if you're just looking for any browser in general, then just try each of them out and see what you like about them. See what's important to you, see what's not important to you, and you can make a decision. So hopefully this video helped you out and you're able to make a better choice on, what you, on which browser you want. If you enjoyed this video or you liked any of my other videos that I do on the channel, you can always donate $8 to my Patreon page. Anything as low as that is always very helpful and much appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I encourage you to subscribe. We have plenty of other tutorials on our channel. We talk a lot about uh, you know, computer and technology and different types of software. So if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend you check out some of my other videos. And I also have a gaming channel, a vlogging channel, a music channel, and an advice channel. If you want to check any of those out, links are in the description as well as on the end card. And with that, thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back soon. You think, don't go anywhere.